Okay, let's get going. Uh, my name is Kimball Parker. I'm the CEO of 650. Um, uh, for those of you that are hearing about 650 for the first time, we are uh, we work with the law firm Wilson Sonsini to automate uh, the legal documents that a lawyer would typically write for you. And uh, you know, but before we get started, I just want to talk briefly about what what lawyers do. You know, in, in order to comply with certain laws, uh, businesses need paperwork. So they need policies and procedures and notices and contracts. And uh, those documents need to say the right things. And if not, there are serious consequences. And this is uh, especially the case with privacy law. And so what lawyers do is uh, they make sure that the paperwork says all the right things. And so what, what we've done at 650 is uh, we've worked with the law firm Wilson Sonsini to teach a computer to write legal documents that say the right things. So our products are like TurboTax in that they ask you questions, depending on your answers, it, it modifies a document in the background, but it's like TurboTax, but with the best lawyers in the nation behind it. And so instead of paying a lawyer $50,000 to write, um, to write the legal documents you need for China's new privacy law, and then getting those documents a month later from a lawyer, we can do that for you at a fraction of the cost and in the same day and in English and Chinese, which is fun, uh, which I'll show you uh, later. And, uh, and again, it's all backed by one of the best uh, law firms in the world. So uh, today, uh, so that's, that's 650. And uh, today we're gonna talk about China's new privacy law. Now, this webinar is a little different from our other webinars. Um, usually we will pack an hour's worth of dense, substantive legal information into our webinars. Uh, this is different. So we're going to talk briefly about China's privacy law, and then we're going to show you how our tool helps companies comply and, and generate all the paperwork they need. And so uh, th this is a little, it's, th there's some substantive in information in the beginning, but very high level. And then this is more of uh, kind of showing how our tool works, just to give people a fair, fair warning here. So a little different from our typical webinar. Uh, but let's dive in. Let's, let, let's talk about China's new privacy law. Uh, there's, there's been a movement in the law in, uh, in the law recently around privacy. And, you know, 10 years ago, when you created a Facebook account, and uploaded all your information, Facebook owned that data. They could sell it, they could analyze it, they could delete it, and there was really nothing you could do about it. If you wanted it back, tough luck. And so it, it really was, it's not, it wasn't your data anymore. As soon as you put it on a Facebook, it was Facebook's data. And Europe changed that paradigm. So in 2016, the European Union passed a law called the GDPR the General Data Protection Regulation. And that law basically said, organizations don't own your data, you do. And so if you want it back, you can get it. If you want them to delete your data, you can make them do that. Uh, if you wanna know what they're doing with your data, you can ask for that. It's your data. And essentially companies are borrowing your data. Uh, they don't own it. It's like money in a bank. You can take it out if you want. And that, uh, th that was a seismic shift in the law. And Europe gave companies two years to comply. And so the deadline to comply with the GDPR was May, 2018. So uh, shortly after that law took effect, um, other countries and states in the United States started to look and say, hey, we want that same setup. So. California passed a similar law that's called the CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act. Uh, Colorado and Virginia have passed similar laws that go into effect in 2023. Uh, Brazil has passed a similar law uh, and there are others. And this leads us to uh, China. So uh, China, um, on August 20th, China passed a law that's similar to the GDPR. It applies to any company that has employees in China or does business in China. Uh, but instead of giving companies two years to comply, like the GDPR, China required companies to be compliant basically within two months. 
And because it's China, the consequences are severe. The penalties are high. You can also be barred from working in China. It, it's, this is very serious. The, the, the scope of the law is not quite as big as the GDPR. It's, it's a little smaller and it's not a perfect, uh, it's not a perfect match up to the GDPR. So, you know, if you view it as a Venn diagram, there is some, there is some overlap, um, but it's not, it's not a complete overlap. And so, which, which makes it a little, which makes it complicated to comply. So the law is, uh, goes into effect in three weeks, uh, actually less than three weeks, three weeks from Monday, it, it, uh, uh, from, from this Monday, so about two and a half weeks now. And so how can companies comply in that time? Um, Jesse, can you, can you forward uh, to the next slide? Perfect. So, you know, one 10,000 foot view of this uh, about how to comply is that you need two things. First, you need legal documents. You need legal documents that that chart your compliance, that say the right things, that inform consumers of what they need to, you know, actually consumers and employees about what they need to know. And so you need a set of legal documents. Uh, and we're, we're gonna dive into that uh, in, in detail in just a second. The other thing you need is, is some technology. So you need a way, for example, to collect uh, requests from people that say, delete my data or give me access to my data. And uh, we, we actually have a very simple tool for that. And, and we partner with companies who have very robust tools for that. Um, you, you know, you need to know where your data is. You need maybe a data charting software, but that, that's kind of on the technology side. So there's the legal document side, stuff that a lawyer would do for you. And then you have the technology tools you need. We today are gonna focus on the uh, legal documents you need. And, and how to create those quickly. So uh, Jesse, next slide. So here are the compliance documents you need to, to uh, comply with the, with the PIPL. Uh, PIPL stands for Personal Information uh, Protection Law. Uh, uh, and that's, that's a new Chinese privacy law. First, you need internal policies and procedures, okay? These policies, tell your employees how to comply and, and what steps to take. Now, this is important for two reasons. One, your employees need to know what to do. And two, if you're ever audited, the auditor will want to see that you have told your employees the right things. And that, that is big to mitigate any, any uh, kind of fallout from, from something happening. So if, if God forbid, you're ever audited, if a regulator ever looks into your business, you want those internal policies to say the right things in the right way to your employees, covering all the right things. Um, so that's number one, you need internal policies. Number two, you need contract language uh, in your agreements with vendors who you share data with. So if you collect information from China, from Chinese individuals, and then you use a third party to help you store that data or process that data or basically do anything with that data, you need language in your agreement with them that shows that, that, that you're checking all the boxes to make sure that they are a reliable third party to, to work with. That is required by the law. So the law requires you to have certain language with your third parties. Um, now, um, the, this area is still in flux. Uh, China has said that they are going to issue standard contractual clauses, um, but they have not yet. And so we're, we're flying a little blind there. We know kind of basically what, what to say, um, but, but not completely. There's gonna be clarification later, but they're gonna wanna see, we think that uh, the regulators are gonna wanna see an effort to put language in by November 1st. Um, so, uh, so that's number two, contractual language. Number three, impact assessments. The law requires companies to analyze and basically run a cost benefit analysis of how they handle data. 
So if you're doing certain things with data and we help you identify what those things are, if you use automated, pro if you use any kind of automated processing, uh, if you use AI, uh, if, 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 if what you're doing affects the benefits that somebody will, will, will receive, then, then you may have to run an impact assessment to, uh, to kind of figure out the cost benefit of collecting and handling that data. And you need to put it on a piece of paper. Okay, so you need to chart, you need to do, you need to show your work, like, you know, when I was in fifth grade doing math, you need to show your work. And that's very important for, for the regulator. And again, is required by law in the statute. Finally, you need website notices. Uh, and actually not, not just website, um, uh, you, you need notices out to the people who you collect data from. So that includes employees, that includes people who use your website, that includes your customers, Anybody who you have data with, uh, data from in China, you need to let them know what data you're collecting, what you're doing with it, and uh, and who you share that data with. Uh, all of that information. So, these are the main categories of documents that a lawyer would draft for you in this law. Now, now let me tell you two very complicating factors here. The first is that these documents need to be in Chinese, okay? Likely, uh, that's, that's gonna set you up so much better. Um, we, we, we anticipate that, that the regulators in China will want to read them in Chinese, so, so which makes this so much more complicated. Uh, you know, for the GDPR, you can get away with English documents, obviously for California and, um, and uh, for Virginia and Colorado, English is fine. In China, we recommend that, that these documents also be in Chinese. So that adds a, a really difficult layer here. Uh, uh, number two, uh, the other thing that makes this, this uh, pretty difficult is that this is a situation that, that law firms really, really struggle with. So, um, so sometimes there's a situation where a lot of companies need the same thing all at once. And law firms are not built for that. You know, law firms can handle thousands of legal issues a year for companies, but that's spread across lots of areas of law, lots of different practice groups. What sometimes will short circuit a law firm is when everybody needs the same thing at once. And so this actually, this, it doesn't happen that often, uh, but it's happened a few times in the past several years. So there was an overload with the GDPR. Law firms did not do a good job with the GDPR. Their privacy groups were completely overwhelmed by it and did not have the capacity to help all of their clients. Um, during COVID, that was a time where, where law firms were overloaded. And this is another time. You know, law firms are not built to produce documents in a couple of weeks for a thousand of, of their clients who do business in China. And so, uh, so getting those documents in English and, and Chinese and getting them from a law firm right now uh, can be difficult, can, can be pretty difficult. Okay, uh, next slide, Jesse. So, okay, so let me tell you what we've done. So uh, we have automated all of those documents and made them available uh, to companies of any size. And so this is how we created these compliance documents for the PIPL. First, we have an in-house privacy team. Um, and actually, uh, a, a few of them are, are on the call today to, to answer any questions you have in the Q&A and in the chat. But we drafted those, we, we read through the law, Stanford produced an English version of the law within 24 hours, which is incredible and uh, a very, very good, good translation. So we uh, translated the law or we, we, we read through the translation. We then drafted all of the compliance documents that, that a company would need. And we, and we did that with the help of Wilson Sonsini and, and Wilson Sonsini's privacy group. So Wilson Sonsini's privacy group is one of the best privacy groups in the world. Uh, the group who we worked with is based in Brussels and, and they specialize in the GDPR. And so because there's so much, there's, there's some similarity between the PIPL and the GDPR, 
we, we uh, used their uh, Europe-based team as, as our base. We then sent the documents to Fangda partners in China to review them and redline them. Fangda partner is our, who we consider to be the best privacy experts in China. Uh, so Fangda partner then uh, reviewed them, redlined them, we incorporated them, we went back and forth with them a, a couple of times to make sure that we understood all the implications of what they were doing. We then translated uh, those documents with the help of Fangda partners into Chinese. And it actually took, took a little bit for us to kind of figure out, you know, what was the right dialect to, to translate it into. These documents right now are translated into Chinese simplified, which we think is the best uh, written form of Chinese for, uh, for regulators. So we translated all the documents into Chinese and then we automated them in both languages. And so the result is that uh, all of these documents are now automated on our system and somebody can go on a, a company if they use our service can create these documents in under an hour um and so uh and so and and, and i'm going to kind of show i'm going to uh, dive into the system here in just a second and and show how that's used but i want to stop here uh to see if there are any questions so i'll just pause for a second if if, if anybody has any questions you can put it into the q a um and jesse i think you you, you can stop sharing now um, and, uh, so you can pop it into the Q and A and, um, and if there aren't any questions then we are going to move forward. So here's how we're going to proceed from here. I am going to show you how our system works and how documents are created in our system. Um, and so I'm going to show a video briefly about how documents are created generally. And then I'm going to jump into the system and show you how documents are, how PIPL documents specifically are generated within our system. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some of the documents um, and how they look and feel. And so you, you can get a sense for the work product uh, too. And then we'll answer any questions. And if there aren't any questions, then, then uh, we'll be done. Um, let me say that if, if, if at any point you want uh, to talk uh, with somebody about uh, obtaining our product, you can go to 650.com backslash China. So 650.com backslash China. And then you, you can talk with a representative who can talk to you about pricing and, 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 and how to get onboarded. We have beefed up our onboarding team uh, to account for the wave. So if you need, if you need to, um, uh, if you need uh, anything, uh, if you need to get onboarded quickly, we can help you with that. Okay. So, um, okay, it looks like there's maybe uh, one. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I, I, th I think we're good to go here. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and, and then we'll get going. All right. So first, um, okay, actually, sorry, let me make sure that I did that correctly. Share sound. Yes, here we go. First, uh, I'm going to show you how our system works generally. And then again, and then we're going to jump into the tool. So one second here. And I'm a customer success manager at 650. Using our platform to create customized legal documents is easy, simple, and intuitive. Let me show you how. When you log in, you'll see the categories of documents you can create on the left. This will vary depending on what products you purchase from 650. Choose the category of documents you need and then click New Document. A list of available documents will then appear with a brief description of each. Choose the specific document you want by clicking Create. This will bring you to a list of questions about your business. You can answer them in any order you like. Our system will take your answers and create a customized legal document just like a lawyer would. When you finish the questions, you'll see the documents you've created in a list. Wait for 60 seconds as our system customizes your documents and then refresh your browser. You'll then see a download button appear, which means your documents are ready. We give you the legal document in Microsoft Word so you can edit the contents as you like afterward. The law can change frequently, and every time it does, you need to update your legal documents. That used to mean lots of time, money, and stress, but not with 650. 
We alert you by email and in-app messages whenever the law changes in a way that impacts your documents. All you need to do is regenerate it in the system. It's the easiest way to generate top-tier legal documents and keep them up to date. Okay, so that, that kind of gives you a sense of how our system works generally. Now, let me show you how our system works specifically with the PIPL. So here's uh, an account that just has the PIPL documents loaded in. And so you can click PIPL documents on the left. And then let's click new document. And this will show you the documents that are, that are available. And, I, and I'll run through them one by one. First, there's a PIPL policy customized for a processor or what, what the PIPL calls an, an entrusted party. And then we have a similar policy, but it's customized for a handler or a controller. A controller is kind of the, the processor and controller are the GDPR parlance and entrusted party and handler are the, are the sorry, the, process and the, the processor and controller are the GDPR parlance and the entrusted party and the handler are, are, is the language under the PIPL. So you want different things in that policy depending on whether you're a controller or a processor. You know, is this, is this data that you collect directly and do things with, or is this data that you're handling for another person? And so, or sorry, for another party, for another company. And you want different things in that policy depending on which side you're on. And so we have a policy uh, version for each of those, for each of those instances. Now, a lot of companies will be a processor. For example, you, you will be a processor or an entrusted party for your employees. If you have employees in China, if you uh, use independent contractors in China, if you, do, if you do kind of direct interactions with Chinese individuals, you will be a processor. A handler is if you handle that data from another party. A lot of companies will be both. Some companies will be a processor in some ways and a handler in some ways, and you want a different policy for both of those use cases. And so we have those for you. We have a contract addendum uh, that, that covers all the obligations you need to ensure are, are in a contract under the PIPL. And again, we have two different versions of those. We have one version if you're the processor or controller and another version if you're the processor. And so, um, uh, and so it's, it's, it's uh, again, you want different terms in there. You want lighter terms for yourself if you're the processor. You want sh more strict terms in there if you're uh, if you're the controller if it's if it's if it's your data and you're giving it to someone else and so we have two versions of those depending on kind of where you sit there we have an impact assessment this is similar to uh to the data uh, protection impact assessment or the dpia under the gdpr and what 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 this will do is basically run a cost benefit for you walk you through that process uh, for the PIPL to see if you're allowed to handle data under that law. And then finally, we have a privacy notice. Um, and this actually can be catered for your website or given to employees. Uh, it, it can be used for anybody who you collect data from. And, uh, and so, uh, so those, are the, those are the main documents that, uh, that, uh, that a regulator would be looking for if you were audited. And so, uh, so let me show you how this works. So let's, let's kind of dive in to the website privacy notice. This is one of the most important documents. Let's click create. And then you can see that it, 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 it fills up a list of questions on the left. And then when you click on a question, it populates the, uh, the important information here on the right. And, and there's basically a prompt and then some supportive, supporting information. And then occasionally we'll have see more information here that you can click and it creates a pop out that has some additional information. So let's say, I understand. What is the name of your organization? Uh, and we want the organization's formal name and their shorthand name. So 650, 650 LLC, let's say, and 650. Next. And then, you know, if you fill this out before, which I have, then we will save your answers below, below here. Uh, next few questions are about how your organization collects personal information. Can users, customers create an online account on your website? Yes or no? If yes, we are gonna add some clauses in into that privacy notice to account, to take into account those that online account. So, so let's say yes. 
do you collect any you know, personal information in addition to what's below? Communications, customer support, careers. If you say yes, we do collect in more ways, then we'll follow up and we'll ask you about those ways. Uh, if, if you say no, we'll add in kind of, uh, of the basics that everybody does and, and, and we'll move on. So, so we'll kind of walk you through it thing by thing, uh, question by question. You can see there's, there's quite a bit of questions here. So you maybe have to answer 25 to 30 questions, depending on, on, on how you answer those, depending. And yeah, and so, you know, for some questions, depending on how you answer, we'll add more questions in, into your queue. Uh, the last question is, would you like a, tra a Chinese translation of your document? So if you say no, it'll just be in English. If you say yes, then it will be in English and Chinese. And so we created one of these uh, earlier uh, that I have here. Let's see, privacy notice, here we go. So here is a PIPL privacy notice that I, that I created just before, uh, just before this webinar. And so you can see created today, last updated October 13th, 2021. It has all the information in English. This is the information that you provide to us, account information, communications, you know, career support information. Here's what we collect by other means, social media and cookies. Here's how we use your personal information, so on and so forth. So it has all the information you need uh, under the law. And then here it is in Chinese. So this, is a perfect translation, we think, as, as good as you could get on the market of all of the information above in, uh, in Chinese. Okay, so that's, that's the website notice. And then it's the same uh, process, let's say for a compliance policy. Um, so again, if you want a, a compliance policy and you're a processor or an entrusted party, you click new document, you answer a bunch of these questions. When you're done, let's see here, I think I have one here. Then we create, here's the uh, 650 China uh, data handling policy for entrusted parties. Here's the, all the language you need in English to kind of let, let, your, um, let your employees know what to do, how to handle information, what, you know, what to do if something occurs, who to contact. And then uh, here is the policy in Chinese. And so, and so again, you, you, the translation is optional. You can have it in English, just English, or just in Chinese. Uh, uh, actually, I guess you can't have it just in Chinese. You can either have it in English or English and Chinese. If you wanted it just in Chinese, then you could just uh, 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 delete the uh, Eng English translation. We, we uh, provide the documents to you in Word. Microsoft Word, so that then you can uh, you can edit them later. Now, here's one of the best parts about this: we update this information uh, whenever something happens. So, for example, right now there are a lot of gaps. The uh, regulators in China are going to issue a lot of guidance about what to do moving forward, and when they issue those, then we will alert you, just like that video showed. We'll send you an email and we'll give you an in-app alert. And that will direct you to this help center uh, and, and into the specific article. So for example, here's a GDPR update we issued uh, about a month and a half ago about the new standard contractual clauses. And so we'll give you a little update. We'll say, here's what the clauses are. Here are the main differences. Here's how it impacts your documents. So it impacts this question and that question. And, and then oftentimes we will provide a red line of your document so that you can see what has changed. Uh, and so, um, and so this, this isn't just a one-time service. So when you, when you purchase the product from us, we will then keep it up to date for one full year. And then, and then you can renew after that if uh, you want. And so, and so instead of having somebody there dedicated, looking at all the, you know, looking at the updates from, I'm from China, we can take care of that for you. It's like having Wilson Sonsini's privacy department there for you, making the updates for you and pushing them out to you. Um, so, so that's our service. We also provide some privacy consulting for our customers. Uh, we, we, with our privacy experts, Marie Colbeth and Austin Smith, and they can, they can help you uh, with, with some simple kind of uh, blocking and tackling about how to handle certain things. 
and that uh, a, a certain amount of hours come complementary with uh, when, when you purchase the product. So the price uh, varies, uh, starts at seven thousand five hundred dollars uh, uh, for the year, and and goes up from there depending on certain things. Uh, so price starts at seven thousand five hundred dollars for all the documents you need and updates for the entire year. Now. Uh, one last thing, we do this for every major privacy law now. So we do the same thing for the GDPR, for California's privacy law, for the two new Colorado and Virginia privacy laws, for the UK, for the United Kingdom variant of, of, the, uh, of the GDPR. And then we're adding other, um, other places as well, Brazil, uh, Canada. We're going to add some other privacy laws uh, moving forward so that a company can come here and manage all of their privacy documentation for all the major uh, general privacy laws throughout the world uh, from our platform. And then again, we update all of those for you so that if you're in multiple jurisdictions, you don't have to hire someone to kind of look at that. We will keep you up to date with all, all of the different developments and keep your documents up to date. Um, okay, so that's the kind of short demo there. Uh, again, if you are interested in learning more and purchasing the product, uh, uh, before the November 1st deadline, you can go to 650.com backslash China. We actually received one question here in the chat uh, or, or, or in the Q&A. And, and the question was, is November 1st the, the date when the two month grace period starts or is November 1st the date when you have to comply? Great question. The date that you have to comply is November 1st. So, so when they pass a law on August 20th, they, they gave you a two month grace period to, to comply, very short. Um, but that, that grace period basically started on August 20th to November 1st. So companies need to have their documentation at the very least their documentation ready by November 1st in, in, in order to comply. Um, so really great question there. I'm just gonna check the chat. Um, to see if uh, if there are any other uh, questions here, um, it, it looks like uh, it looks like we're we're good there. It, I, I, I'm just going to pause, see if there are any other questions. Um, don't be shy; you can put them in the Q and A or in the chat. Again, if you're if you're interested in learning more, you can go to 650.com backslash China and schedule a time to talk with one of our one of our representatives. We've beefed up uh, all of our, our implementation crew so we can get hundreds of companies in before the deadline. Uh, and okay, so, uh, oh, it looks like there's, there's one chat here. Okay, does the law apply to Hong Kong or just mainland China? Okay, this is a really great question. Actually, Marie and Austin, are you, are you two on the line here still? Pause just for a second to still to hear. Okay, Marie, great question for you here. Does the law apply to Hong Kong and Taiwan, or is it just mainland China? Uh, this is a great question. In generally, the answer is mainland China. Um, the the way that this is being interpreted is that special administrative distri districts like Hong Kong, the data being processed inside of Hong Kong is not regulated by this law but any data that's um, transferred from mainland China to Hong Kong is regulated. That's an export of the data under the law. So if say a company has you know, offices in mainland China and in Hong Kong, and some of that data is being passed between the offices, that data will be regulated by the export requirements. Nice, okay, so it sounds like this mainly deals with mainland China but there are some instances where if data is transferred out of Hong Kong into different places that, that that could be subject to the transfer requirements. Into Hong Kong, yes. Into Hong Kong, okay, perfect. Okay, thank you, uh, Marie. That is Marie Colbeth, who, who uh, will uh, be answering, they can answer questions just like that for you if, if you sign up for our service. Um, any, any other questions? I'm just gonna pause here for a second to see if any others come in. Uh, one more minute, don't be shy. Um, again, if you wanna learn more, 650.com backslash China. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining. Short little webinar. Uh, 
hopefully, you know, we're here to help you comply if, if, if you need it. Uh, our customer success team is, is, is ready there for you. So thank you very much. And uh, next week, we will uh, return to our regularly scheduled high density uh, legal uh, brain dump webinars. So thank you very much. And uh, we will be back soon.